JB and we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Man fatally shot after attacking police and a civilian. A man believed to be of unsound mind was fatally shot during a confrontation with the police moments after he wounded an elderly man at Kingston in Manchester on Sunday. The man's identity has not yet been ascertained. An eyewitness said that the elderly man ran about 150 meters from where he was attacked on the Kingston Main Road by the man, said to be mentally ill, to a nearby gas station to seek refuge. Preliminary reports are that at about 1 p.m., police were alerted to the incident. On their arrival, the man reportedly stoned the police, and despite their attempts to subdue him, he continued hurling stones. The police fired warning shots before opening fire on the man. He was taken to hospital and pronounced dead. Three policemen were also taken to hospital for treatment and are to undergo X-ray tests. Teenager's body recovered from Rayomino. The body of a teen who went missing on Saturday was recovered Sunday along a section of the Rayomino in Clarendon. It is believed the teen, identified as 13-year-old Nicholas Mitchell, a former student at the Old Arbor High School, may have drowned. It is alleged that Mitchell, who lived at Gerald Avenue in Effortville, Clarendon, went to a section of the Rayomino on Saturday, October 12th, about midday for a swim with friends, he reportedly got into difficulties and his body went under the water. His stepfather reported the matter to the police. The body was recovered sometime around 11.30 a.m. Police seized gun and ammo in Waterhouse. The police on Saturday seized a gun and ammunition while on patrol along Penwood Road in the vicinity of Unity Drive in Waterhouse, St. Andrew. Reports are that at about 6.30 p.m., the police were patrolling the area when they observed a man traveling on a motorcycle who, on seeing the lawman, sped off onto Unity Drive where then threw an object along the roadway and made his escape. The police said the area was searched and a bag was found containing a black browning 9mm pistol along with two magazines and a 31 assorted rounds. No one was arrested in connection with the seizure. Man killed along road in Above Rock, St. Catherine. The St. Catherine police have launched a probe following the discovery of the body of an unidentified man along a road in above rocks in the parish early Sunday morning. At about 2.20 a.m., the police responded to reports of explosions in above rocks and proceeded to a section of the community called Rosalie Lane in Barnett District. On their arrival, the body was found with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. The body was removed to the Linsett Hospital, where death was confirmed. Man marked for death killed in Stony Hill. A mere two weeks after being shot repeatedly at a football game, 37-year-old Adrian Hines, otherwise called Shoppy, was killed at his gate on Erie Castle Road in Stony Hill, St. Andrew, by a gunman who ran bullets on the already injured target. Hines was one of two people shot on September 29, while he sought recording a match at a night football competition that was in progress in the tasty parking lot in Stony Hill Square. On that occasion, men alighted from a motor vehicle and opened fire in his direction. Hines was rushed to hospital, where he was treated and released. Reports were that, sometime after 10 p.m. Saturday night, Hines was at his gate when a gunman opened fire, hitting him several times. He was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he died while undergoing surgery. We can't believe Adrian gets shot up again. Him not even fully recovered from a last attack. What about much of the ills with the violence? A whole heap of shot fire, a resident said. The brazenness of the attacks has left the community current in fear. It simply means someone wanted this man dead. They didn't get it done the first time, and they came back to complete what they started. It was marked for death. That's exactly what this onslaught means, an investigator said at the scene. The scene was littered with spent casings, as investigators laid out markers to capture evidence. The Constant Spring Criminal Investigation Branch is probing the murder. The St. Andrew North Police Division has seen an increase in murders and shootings this year, as at October 5, the division recorded 51 murders, seven more, or a 16% increase year on year. Likewise, there were seven more reported shooting incidents with 56, a 14% increase over the corresponding period last year. Taxi operator charged after allegedly stealing a woman's phone. Police have charged a 36 year old taxi operator after allegedly choked a female motorist and stole her phone on Duke Street in downtown Kingston on Saturday. J.C. Higgins of Devon Avenue, Kingston 5, is charged with robbery with violence. The Kingston Central Police say at about 9.30 a.m., Higgins entered the rear passenger seat of a woman's park car and started choking her. He allegedly hit the woman several times in the face before robbing her of her phone. He then escaped in the area. 
A report was made to the police who later arrested and charged Higgins after it was positively identified. His court date is being finalized. Juki charged with sister's murder. As St. Catherine Manuel allegedly confessed to killing and burying a woman who was like a sister to him, has been charged with murder and unlawful burial. He is Orlando Chin, otherwise called Juki, of Cassava River, Glengough. Chin was charged Saturday afternoon following a question and answer session. The deceased woman, 32 year old Lisa Gay Cobra, otherwise called Babes, went missing on September 28. The deceased woman, 32 year old Lisa Gay Cobra, otherwise called Babes, went missing on September 28, and a notice was posted in the community offering a $100,000 reward for a safe return. It is understood that Chin turned up at the Lawrence Severn Police Station in St. Andrew on Monday night and reportedly confessed to the heinous crime. Dressed in full black and wearing handcuffs on Tuesday morning, he led investigators to the spot where Kobe was buried in a shallow grave in the Ely community. It's understood that Kobe's mother, Sonia Beverly, who had four girls, desired her son so badly that she took Chin into her girl's stone lane home in Glengoff ten years ago. Mocha recovers billions of dollars from forfeited assets. The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency Mocha has been successful in recovering billions of dollars from the forfeiture of assets and cash from people convicted of drug trafficking, fraud and other crimes. This was revealed in the Senate on Friday by a lead of government business, Kamina Johnson Smith, during a debate on amendments to the first schedule of the Mocha Act, which seeks to give the anti-corruption agency more powers to investigate offenses such as simple larceny, predal larceny, and breaches of the Fisheries Act. Let me just say billions of dollars. Let me, let me say billions of, um, of U.S. and Jamaican dollars. I mean, the forfeited bank accounts are uh, amounting to more than $282 um, million, $486 uh, million, $154 a billion dollars worth of, um, of, of, um, of real property. This, listen, if I were to go through, let's not even count the vehicles, cash and investments. These are from, yeah, there's, oh, there are overlapping because within the cases, you may have um, 30 vehicles within one case. You may have 10 bank accounts within another. Exa exa exactly. So their MOCA is focused on its work. 2,000 fatalities recorded in nearly six years of the nation's roads. Tashanti Jones, a 14-year-old female student of Mushet High School, was among three people who died in a crash along the North Coast Highway near Greenside in Trelawney on Friday morning. Later in the evening, Carlton Palmer, a security guard, was killed in a four-vehicle collision on the Port Municipal Boulevard in St. Catherine. Palmer, who was stationed at the United States Embassy, died at the wheel after a Subaru Impreza collided head-on with a Toyota Pro Box. A Nissan Rogue and a Toyota Harrier were also involved in the accident, which occurred around 4.30 p.m. The crash caused the gridlock in the area, leading to congestion on nearby roads. The Island Traffic Authority, ITA, noted that although road fatalities declined in the first half of 2024, road users are being urged to exercise caution. As of October 11, the country recorded 290 road fatalities from 249 fatal collisions. The ITA shared that compared to last year, road fatalities have decreased by 11%, while fatal crashes have decreased by 18% year-on-year. From January 1, 2019 to October 11, 2024, a total of 2,000 people have died in road accidents from 1,784 fatal crashes. At least 68 homeless people reunited with families since 2020, says Mackenzie. Local Government and Community Development Minister Desmond Mackenzie says since 2020, more than 68 homeless people have been rehabilitated and reunited with their families. Since 2020, more than 68 homeless persons have been rehabilitated and have been returned to their families and is now contributing fully to the growth and development of Jamaica. And I think this is a tremendous achievement by those persons. So ladies and gentlemen, today I want to commend the KSNC in its effort to continue a program that was started before. The Mary Atkins facility is one of two. We have the other facility, the Desmond Mackenzie facility, which is presently in the second phase 
of construction where we will expand the space to take an additional 45 more homeless persons. While that is not going to be adequate enough, we still continue our effort. But in closing, I want to use this opportunity to make a personal appeal to Jamaicans. Many of our oldest friends, our families, they have homes, but some of the families have abandoned them, turned their backs on them, turned them out. I want to use the occasion this morning to call on Jamaicans to take personal responsibility for your family. Help us to leave the streets. There are over 3,000 Jamaicans right across the country who continue to make the streets their homes. Help us to reduce those numbers. JB and we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.